Welcome to Coffee with Coker, the premier healthcare business podcast published by the Coker Group. I'm your host, Mark Reibolt, uh, and uh, this is the next uh, episode of what we call Espresso Shots, which are a little shorter episodes, more unique, but very specific to um, very targeted topic or, or subject matter that we want to cover in a little bit shorter form from our fuller regular episodes. And today we're again talking about the topic of physician compensation. Specifically, we're talking about understanding physician compensation market data. Um, This is something that actually uh, won't be the last time we talk about this on the podcast for sure. We do a lot of work as it relates to physician compensation and pretty much everything we do in that realm is, is highly tied to and influenced by market data that's out there. Once again, we're, we're glad to welcome Justin Shamley, who is a uh, senior vice president here at Coker and who is over the area of physician compensation services. He is recognized as, as very much one of the um, well-known experts on this topic out there. So um, in that regard, this conversation talks about market data, And specifically, we're talking about a couple of the key benchmarks that are used in that market data when we look at things like fair market value, commercially reasonableness, and other metrics that drive physician compensation plans, models, metrics, etc. Obviously, this is something that is um, very influential within the industry as it relates to compensation. So I hope you enjoy this episode talking about physician compensation with Justin Shambly. Um, And just a quick reminder, please follow us. uh, If you're so inclined, you can um, follow us directly on Twitter at Coker Group. You can also find us on LinkedIn. And for past episodes, you can find all of the podcasts Coffee with Coker episodes at coffeewithcoker.com. And um, we also uh, want to solicit any feedback you may have on whether it's a topic we've talked about or a topic you'd like us to address in the future, or if you have questions you'd like us to address. Um, We're definitely going to be having some of those episodes here in the uh, near future where we address those questions. So um, please feel free. You can contact us via the website. Again, coffeewithcoker.com, or you can find us through the main Coker website at cokergroup.com, or you can reach out to us directly at feedback at cokergroup.com. Again, uh, we hope you enjoy this episode with Justin Shamley talking about physician compensation market data. All right, another episode of an espresso shot with Coffee with Coker, and we have another frequent guest back with us, Justin Shamley. Welcome. Thanks. Great Justin Justin heads up our um, compensation services and um, and is, I would say, all around physician compensation expert. Specifically, what we're talking about today is, is understanding physician comp market data. And we have a question that we get literally weekly from, from clients and, and others out there in the marketplace that it is, it's a common theme and it's something we're regularly addressing and clarifying and speaking to. And so we thought it'd be helpful for just to kind of cover it at a high level, at least. Um, and then obviously we can, you know, answer questions and drill down deeper to some of the more nuance of it later. But what we're talking about today is specifically we're trying to get into the weeds on how to interpret market data in relation to the, the link or connection between pay and production. And so with that, Justin, maybe just talk about kind of the question we get and then why it's relevant and some of our kind of general rules on the on the topic. Yeah, sure. That's a it, it is a, a hot topic that comes up and, and it feels like it's come up really since work RV based models became in vogue. And uh, we, we hear it, as you said earlier, literally weekly. And that is this notion that. Uh, to, to state it as how it's stated to us, hey, if I am producing in worker reviews at the 75th percentile, I should be paid at the 75th percentile rate per worker review. So that's in essence how it's always stated to us, meaning there should be a correlation between my production and the rate at which my production is being converted to compensation. And what we say is, no, that's not correct. And as a general rule, if you are producing compensation or producing work RVUs at the 75th percentile, it would be reasonable to be paid 
close to the 75th percentile as a general rule. So that's not an indication of fair market value or anything akin to that. That's just a general rule that it would be reasonable to expect production and compensation to be aligned. And the rate per worker of you should be whatever is needed to allow that correlation to occur. And typically, when you are looking at a perfect correlation between pay and production, meaning 75th percentile production, 75th percentile pay, 25th percentile production, 25th percentile pay, median production, median pay, and on and on and on, that rate per work RVU tends to be pretty darn close to the median, all right? And so that's really what we always focus on is not the correlation between production and the rate per work RVU, but production and pay, and that rate per work RVU being close to the median. And, you know, that this can sometimes be offensive to those that we're working with because they don't view themselves as, quote, median physicians. And what we have to explain is, well, you're not. If your production is at the 75th percentile, then that's generally what, you know, all else being equal, what you should make. So the median rate is not an indication of how much you're getting paid. It's simply the fact that we are trying to correlate pay and production, and that's the rate that we need to to use. And I know uh, the, the, the plan is to put a table out onto the blog post that goes along with this podcast that uh, further illustrates this concept, but there's a great table that sort of shows scenarios where the rate, the market, per, the, the rate per work RVU is set at the 40th percentile, the median, the 60th percentile, and using color codes of, of yellow, green, and red really indicates this dynamic that we're talking about. And, and what you'll see from this is, while it's not perfect, using the median rate provides a pretty close correlation between pay and production. Using a 40th percentile rate shows production outpacing compensation, and then the opposite is true as we apply a 60th percentile rate, meaning compensation is outpacing production. And that's really what we see is as the rate deviates from the median, the relationship between pay and production breaks down, meaning rates below the median tends to have production outpacing compensation, rates above the median tends to have production being outpaced by compensation. And so, uh, once again, the whole point of this is to dispel this notion that my production and my rate per work RVU should be correlated. No, that's not the case. Production and compensation, it's reasonable to assume a correlation there, and the rate should be whatever is needed, yeah. which is likely close to the median. Well, I think it's interesting, too, because this, this really tees up the whole conversation that uh, the market data that's out there it can only be dissected so many ways. And so it's, it's easy or it seems simple sometimes for, a, for someone to go in and be like, well, yeah, here's my production level. I did this in terms of RVUs. Therefore, it equates to this in terms of comp. And uh, the reality is, um, you know, this data isn't always perfect. It can be limited. So there has, and, and you have to use it. You can't just use one single data point to drive everything. It has to be all uh, kind of incorporated together. And so it is a balancing effect when we go through this, the fair market value process and evaluating this or developing comp models that, that make sure to provide value, but also incentivize production. Yeah, no, I think that's a great point. The The market data is imperfect, and uh, you can refer to some of the other podcasts that we've recorded speaking more specifically to market data and dissecting it a little bit. But uh, any time that you apply what I would call a mark-to-market uh, type compensation model or what I've heard referred to as a pick-a-percentile compensation model where we're simply picking a percentile out of a book – will tend to be somewhat problematic, more so in the sense that it may or may not necessarily correlate to what you can afford. And that's one of the things that we are seeing more and more is as the market data tends to increase year over year, we see more hospitals questioning whether that perfect correlation that I referred to earlier is financially viable. And what do we need to do to balance being perceived as, quote, market-based in terms of what we provide as compensation, but still also making sure that we can afford that long term from a financial viability standpoint. Yeah, good point. I know when you're looking at this, say you're a health system and you're entering into some sort of alignment affiliation with a private group, 
and you're kind of initially evaluating and analyzing the historical data there, there, there are these cases where we find a significant disparity, you know, real high production yet on the compensation side was, was historically very low in that private practice setting. Are there any kind of general rules there in terms of what the typical reasoning is behind that? I mean, I know there are a lot of different variables that come into play there, but I know we see that too. Yeah, it's a, a great point. What, what, if you really dig into some of the benchmark data, what you see is as production goes up, typically the rate per worker RVU goes down, meaning right. as you get into those higher quartiles of production, if you if you can if you can get the data such that you are seeing the actual rates for those higher producers, you see that the highest producers tend to have some of the lower rates per worker RVU. Mm-hmm. And I see that as being primarily physicians in private practice who are trying to offset either high expense structures or poor payer contracting, yep. or poor payer mix, whatever it may be. Maybe, through higher maybe inefficiencies in the, in the billing and collections, rev cycle process. It, exactly, like and they're trying to offset those inefficiencies wherever they may be through higher production. production. Yeah. And so uh, the, the question is, okay, when you bring those, those groups into some sort of alignment model, whether that is a PSA or employment, what do you do? And I think you've really got to study post-transaction what's going to happen in terms of efficiencies, payer contracts, things akin to that, and then let that drive some of the decision-making, not just benchmark data. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a great point. There is sometimes an over-reliance on purely either the data as a whole or even uh, certain data points. So this has been extremely helpful. Obviously, this is a quick... Uh, kind of down and dirty of the uh, topic, if you will. But um, we talk a lot about comp and, and different subjects related to physician compensation, fair market value, things like that. So definitely have more related to this. As Justin alluded to, we will make sure uh, with the show notes that we have a, a copy of that that table that he referenced, as well as some of the other material. We'll make sure to link back to other episodes and, and any other information that we have on this topic. And uh, we'll look forward to talking more about this and other similar topics here in the near future. But otherwise, thanks, Justin, for the information. And we'll look forward to the, the next episode. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks.